In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant, we pray, that we, who have known his mystery on earth, may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high, and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Never forget the deeds of the Lord. Give heed, my people, to my teaching. Turn your ear to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable and reveal hidden lessons of the past. Never forget the deeds of the Lord. When he slew them, then they would seek him, return and seek him in earnest. They would remember that God was their rock, God the Most High, their Redeemer. Never forget the deeds of the Lord. But the words they spoke were mere flattery. They lied to him with their lips, for their hearts were not truly with him. They were not faithful to his covenant. Never forget the deeds of the Lord. Yet he who is full of compassion forgave them their sin and spared them. So often he held back his anger when he might have stirred up his rage. Never forget the deeds of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your cross you have redeemed the world. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And the Son of Man must be lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is your cross? Or we could even ask, who is your cross? Very often we are asked to unite our crosses with Christ, that we carry the cross of Christ because Christ carries our crosses. And on this feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross, just as we exalt the cross of Christ, do we similarly, if we unite our crosses with Christ, do we also exalt our own crosses? So what is the cross? 
The cross is this wood on which Christ was nailed, crucified, gave his life up for us so that we might be saved. And which is why in our first reading, we have got this beautiful reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 6 to 11. And in many books on Franciscan spirituality, you'll find this passage, uh, this ancient Christological hymn uh, present, because this really speaks of how Francis understood Jesus and his cross. And which is why for us Franciscans, we always say that God is a humble God. And where do we get this from? From this passage of St. Paul to the Philippians. It says that the state of Jesus Christ was divine. But he did not cling his, to his equality with God. And so we have this non-clinginess or possessiveness. And that's at the root of how Francis sees his poverty. It's not just about not having things. It's even the things that we have, the little that we have, we also don't cling to it. Sometimes when, when things look very scarce or not enough, we start to um, become very kiasu and we, like, we're afraid to lose out. And so we're going to cling onto it. Like during time of the panic buyings, um, we actually like to cling to a lot of things and hoard a lot of things. But here, Lord Jesus, shows us that even though his state was divine, he did not cling to it. But because of that mission to save, he actually emptied himself. And the word to empty in the Greek um, comes from the word kinosis, which means to self-empty. And this is really how Francis saw um, Christ, the kinotic Christ. Which is why later, as he was thinking of a name to call the friars, he called them the Friars Minor. And that's what minor uh, really, really encapsulates. To be lesser, to be humbler, always self-emptying, don't think we're better than others. And our Lord Jesus, even though his state was divine, he did not cling his equality with God, but emptied himself. To assume the condition of a slave, and that is to become as we are humankind. First step, kenosis. Second step, kenosis. So at the incarnation, God becomes man. And for Francis and for many, many other saints, they begin to, in their prayer, wonder why would God become man? And if God can become man, then really in that humility, he would do anything for us, including dying on the cross, in shame, in pain. And that's what and how um, this passage continues. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. The most shameful, the most painful form of execution the Romans could think of. Jesus accepted this death because he emptied himself and was humble. And so today on the exaltation of the Holy Cross, just as Francis looked to the cross, looked to the cross of Christ and emulated the humility, the minority of Christ, and which is why Francis was always so peaceful, happy, joyful, thankful. It's because the story doesn't end there. The story continues in our passage. But God raised him I and gave him the name which is above all other names. In the Greek, raised him high is the word to exalt. Because Christ was able to humble himself, empty himself. Therefore, because he was totally obedient to God's mission for him, God the Father then raised him up, exalt him up. And that becomes the salvation of all humankind. And so, my dear friends, if we're able, just like Francis did, to look at the cross and to be able to embrace the meaning of the cross, we will also embrace the salvation of the cross. 
if we are able to follow that way of the cross into humility, into self-emptying, especially self-emptying of pride, so that not our will, but God's will be done, that we become obedient to how God wants us to make our lives full, fulfilling, meaningful. Then let us continue, together with saints like St. Francis, to be able to keep meditating on the cross, and not just meditating with the head, but may this message really seep into our hearts for us to continue this road of self-emptying into obedience, into salvation, into full joy, peace, and kindness, generosity, and most of all, love. So let us now pray in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those you have redeemed by the wood of your life-giving cross to the glory of the resurrection, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.